Hi everybody, this is uh, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, just wanted to show off our programmable infrared controller module that can control AC via this onboard relay. The onboard relay has three outputs, common, normally uh, closed, and normally open, labeled on the board as N NO, and uh, C, and CO. Uh, I'm going to show you how to put one together in this video. I'm also going to give you a demonstration. Uh, the receiver is 38 kilohertz compatible, so that would work with your Rogers controller and most controllers, actually. Uh, I imagine it might even be, uh, you might even be able to pick up 56 kilohertz uh, infrared controllers as well. But I'm just going to be demonstrating uh, two controllers. Now, when you, uh, when you press a button on here, they've all got, got their own, each button has its own different sequence. Some controllers send um, the same data stream over and over and over again where others when you press a button it sends the data stream and then there's the uh, output goes high and then it sends it again uh, so it's a little bit different we're going to look at two different methods of programming this specific controller uh, you can hold the button down while in program mode and it will uh, program this one you'll likely have to press the button continually during the program mode to get it to program and even then you might need to do it a couple times now after you program it only that specific button that you press should activate the relay and toggle the relay um, and so um, you re it requires 7 to 10 volts DC. I'm going to power it on. Test sequence. That's the program LED. This is the active LED. When the active LED is on, the relay is on. Uh, so let's do a demonstration on programming it. I'm going to use this one first. So in this case, you're going to have to experiment on your own. Uh, I can actually hold the button down while during program mode, and it might work, and it, it should work. Now, if First time you program, it doesn't it doesn't uh, go through. Try try again. Most of the buttons should work. You might find one or two buttons that actually just will not be compatible with the system. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the volume up button. So I'm going to hold down the program button. Before I actually do that, if you just if you just tap the program button, you can toggle the relay. Uh, but if you want to program in and use the remote, what you do is you hold down the program button and hold down the button you want to. Uh, use and aim it at the receiver right here. Uh, usually within a couple inches should be okay. So you hold down the program button and the program LED should start blinking. There we go. Now I might use another button and have a lot more trouble programming it. Uh, you'll know if it doesn't accept it because the program LED will eventually blink out. But now I can go from across the room and activate the relay so you can control DC or AC with it and just toggle it on and off so uh, with that one I was able to actually just hold the volume plus button whereas on a lot of the other ones like the Rogers remote I'll actually have to tap it several times so let's try Rogers remote I'll get a, give a better view of this so right now it's still programmed with the other controller uh, uh, for the volume up button uh, for this specific controller, uh, I know I know from just experience that I'm going to have to tap the button. So actually, let's try button one. Now remember, not all buttons will work, but most of them should. Uh, so I'm going to try doing button one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to once I uh, once I put into program mode, I'm going to tap it at about this frequency, and we'll see if we'll get it if we'll be able to use button one to activate the relay. No such luck there. Let's try it again. No such luck. Let's try another button. Let's try the volume plus button again. Volume plus worked. No problem. But I had to uh, tap it. So now I can go from across the room as long as uh, the remote is within the view of the uh, receiver. So let's try one more button. Let's try volume down. There we go. Now, what I do know, uh, notice is with this controller, it's a little bit more difficult. A lot of the buttons do give me trouble. Volume up and volume down, no problem. If I press volume up, 
nothing. If I press volume down, because I have program volume down. Now I haven't tried all the buttons, but the ones that I've had uh, most luck with are the volume up and volume down on the Rogers remote. So let's try one more random remote. I've got my DVD player remote, so let's try that. So here's another remote, DVD remote. Uh, again, some buttons will have more compatibility with the board than others. You just have to experiment. Typically, volume plus, volume minus work the best, but let's try uh, 9. So what I'll do is I will press the program button, and I will tap 9 at this frequency. There we go. No problem with that one. So we might have trouble with other other buttons, but let's try two. Two didn't two didn't work very well. So let's try two one more time. And we got it. So. If all if it, if it fails right away, if you have some trouble, try try again, because it might take some time for it to uh, to accept. It might take a couple tries. So I've tried two and nine. Let's try one more on here. Let's try fast forward. Yeah, it worked. So just because that LED goes out doesn't the program LED goes out doesn't necessarily mean that it's out of the programming sequence. So three have tried uh, on this specific one, two, nine, and fast forward. Let's try one more. Let's try pause. Okay, I didn't like pause. Let's try one more time. There we go. See? Try, try again. Now, pause works. So there you have it. Uh, you'll have to fiddle with it, try a bunch of different remotes, see which one works best for you. In my case, this Samsung TV remote worked hands down the best for me. But uh, Roger's remote, most buttons will work. You just need some patience to determine which buttons are the best. This DVD remote works quite well. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what comes with the kit in, in case you wanted to purchase it in kit form. Sorry for the poor lighting, folks. I'm actually moving to a new lab soon that's going to have uh, LED lighting, so everything will be um, much easier to see in the upcoming videos. Anyway, here's the uh, kit. You got your custom PCB, two red L uh, LEDs, three millimeters, uh, one in 4001 diode, a uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, 7805 volt regulator, 2-pin terminal block, a uh, infrared receiver module, 3 pins, uh, mon momentary push switch, a DIP-18 socket, program microcontroller, all within the uh, protective uh, coating here, a 2K ohm resistor, a 1K ohm resistor, a 10K ohm resistor, two 470 ohm resistors, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, a 3-pin terminal block, and a 5-volt relay. So first of all, let's talk about the uh, resistors. There are five resistors total, and we want to solder them into the board. Each resistor is labeled with uh, an indicator of, uh, as to what its value is. For instance, R1 is located right here. It's labeled R1, 1K. So we want to place our 1K ohm resistor here. R4 is labeled R4, 470R for 470 ohm. We want to put one of our two 470 ohm resistors in the R4 slot right here. R5 is labeled R5, 10K. We want to place a single 10K ohm resistor in R5. Um, R2 is labeled R2, 2K. So we want to place our single 2K ohm resistor in the R2 slot. And lastly, R3 is our last 470 ohm resistor labeled R3, 470R. So resistors do not have a polarity. Make sure that you, if you can't read a resistor color code, that you use your multimeter to determine which values are which. Place them in those slots, solder them in, make sure there's no shorting going on. And next we will do our capacitors, our LEDs, and our diode. Your 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor has a long leg and a short leg. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. And it goes in the C4 slot, labeled C4 100U for 100 micro. The, on the top here, the, on the top uh, uh, hole, from this perspective, there is a little plus sign. You might not be able to see it from where you're looking, but when you, if you have the board in front of you, there's a little plus sign indicating positive. So you want to place the long lead 
in the upper hole here and your short lead in the bottom hole from this perspective. And if you reverse that and you turn it on, your capacitor might pop. And it certainly will not do what it's supposed to be doing. So take, uh, take some time and be very careful with that. C2, uh, labeled 0.1U for 0.1 micro, C2 is your ceramic capacitor. And it, it had, it, both leads are uh, equal, of equal length. There is no polarity, so you can place it in either way. Very easy. The uh, LEDs have a short leg and a long leg. Um, and they go into the program LED slot and the active LED slot. From this perspective, your long leads go on the left and your short leads go on the right. Long lead, short lead, long lead, short lead. And another way to remember that is that the side with the indicator, in this case program, and in this case active, that side of the board is where you want to put your short leads, your negative leads. Your long leads will go on the left from this perspective. Now your diode has a white stripe on it on one side and black on the other. The D1 slot right here labeled 1N4004D1 has a white stripe on the top of the footprint and on the back nothing. So from a bird's eye view you want to make sure that the white side of the diode, the white side with the white stripe is facing uh, the upper hole and that your black side of the diode is facing the lower hole. If you turn that around as soon as you turn your relay on you'll have a short circuit and it will reset the system. So be very very careful there. Uh, the white stripe is actually an indicator of the negative or cathode and the black side is your positive or anode. So again, negative on top, stripe, black on the bottom, positive. So solder those all into place, take good care, no shorting, and next we will do our uh, transistor our, and our terminal blocks. We're also going to include the uh, momentary push switch in this step because it's the easiest. It only really fits in one way. you got four legs. Line up the holes. Pop it in. It should pop in. Make sure it's flush to the board when you solder all four solder joints. The two-pin terminal blocks have a terminal side and a plastic side. Make sure that the terminals are facing out so that you can actually wire in your, your uh, power supply and your switch or rather what, what device you're switching power to. The transistor, the 2N2222 NPN transistor has a flat side with writing on it and it has a curved side. Might be difficult to see from this perspective but the footprint here labeled T1 or uh, T1 2N2222 has a flat side of the footprint and a curved side. So from, from a bird's eye view, make absolutely sure that the flat side is facing the flat side on the footprint and the curved side of the transistor is facing the curved side of the footprint. If you turn that around, your relay will not work. Uh, so once you've soldered those into place, make absolutely sure that there's no shorts, especially on the uh, transistor. Once we're done that, we will do our socket, our infrared detector and our uh, 7805. It's coming together. Uh, we're actually going to include the relay in this step. Relay, let's get it over with. It's got three holes on one side, two on the other. It only fits in one way. So pop that in, make sure it's flush to the board, give uh, each solder joint a healthy amount of solder to flow nicely onto the board. The infrared detector has a window on the front and just writing on the back. On the footprint, labeled RX, there is a curved little footprint on the front indicating that's where the window is. You want the window face, this is the window right here, facing out like that. So solder it down into the board. doesn't matter if you want to add a little bit of height on it. If you don't, it will fit down nicely onto the board. The socket. The socket goes in the IC1 slot, labeled IC1 PIC 18F1220P. There is a notch on the left-hand side of the footprint from this perspective. There is a notch on the left side of the socket. There is a notch on the left side of the programmable microcontroller. So from a bird's eye view, make sure that the notch on the socket is facing the notch on the board, so left from this perspective. And make sure once you've soldered that in that there's no shorts. And when you're done soldering that in, place your microcontroller in with the notch lined up with the notch on the footprint and the notch on the socket facing left. If you turn the microcontroller around so that the notch is on the right facing the relay, you power it up, you're going to fry your microcontroller. So be very, very, very careful of that. Your 7805 has a black side right here with writing on it and a white side. The footprint, which might be a little bit difficult to see right here, 
has a white side and nothing on the front. It's actually labeled 7805. So you want the white side facing the back, the black side facing the terminal block like this. So solder that down from this perspective, uh, flush to the board, cut off the leads. Uh, once you're done soldering that in, again, you've placed your microcontroller, you've soldered everything up, we'll do, we'll, we'll do a, uh, a test. But again, make sure that there's no shorts, be very, very careful of your orientation. So uh, let's uh, power it up and give it a test. So I've put uh, my power supply on the leads. The input leads, by the way, are, are the power supply leads are, are labeled V plus and G and D for ground. V plus is obviously your 7 to 10 volts DC, G and D your input ground. So I'm going to power it up. Test sequence. I was going to try, let's try one. Let's try it again. There we go. It doesn't work once. Just be persistent. Again, this is the controller that sends the constant, uh, the, the, the same uh, data packet over and over and over again without that delay I was talking about. So I can just hold the button down for this specific controller, whereas most controllers I would have to during the program sequence. So across the room, I've got a lot of clutter in here because I'm moving, but I'm going to try to see if I can do this from all the way across the room. Yep, no problem. Just like your TV, very sensitive receiver accurate no other button will be able to to activate it unless I press one only one will activate it I'll press the power button there press the power button nothing so there you go uh, if you want to find this it should be available very soon at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com electroniclessons.com will take you to our eBay store have any questions please don't hesitate to ask thanks for watching everyone